Holds my shepherd I'm not want He makes me lie In pastures green He leads me by The still, still waters His goodness restores my soul And I will try Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Very much welcome to today's service. Let's pray as we commence this service. Precious Father, we want to thank you for another opportunity to come and worship you. To come and be together as a family, as your body. We ask that you come and dwell amidst of us, Lord. We ask that your praises be with us because you made a promise that if two or three are gathered in my name, I am in their midst. We ask that you come and be in our midst, Lord. We ask that you be the center of our worship, Lord. We ask that you be the hope that we need even at this moment. As we walk through this tough time, Lord, as many people, their hearts are shaken, worried, scared, Lord, of what the next day will bring, we ask that, Lord, you be our anchor. We ask that you speak to us, baby, dear Lord, that we be encouraged through whatever that you set for us today. Lord, we thank you, we bless you, we glorify you, in Jesus' name, Amen. 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 The Bible says that, David says these words, that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And when I woke up this morning and I kept to think about the service going into the house of the Lord. Of course, we are the house of the Lord. But again, you take it, Father, we're going to dwell together into worship. I want to ask you this morning that you open your heart and allow God to speak to you. Let it be your desire that you will speak to me. And indeed, he will not fail you. He will speak to you. I want to begin by welcoming all of you. I mean, no, the weather is not that friendly, stepped in to stay in bed, but you managed to beat the weather and you are here. We bless the Lord for your coming. Uh, we're going to begin this service with the celebrations. Um, I have two with me. One is uh, Julie, uh, birthdays. We have uh, tomorrow, Monday, 26th, is Julie's birthday. She's not here. Um, and then Winnie, that's my wife, is again tomorrow on 26th, it's her birthday. Uh, do we have uh, other people that, anybody here that wants to say to uh, celebrate, has a, something to celebrate, could be a birthday, could be wedding anniversary, something that the Lord uh, did within the week that you want to share with us. Please, it's open. Yes. My son starts a new job on Monday. He just got a new job after that weekend. Mm. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Any other? Yes, my sister. Um, my daughter, Sharon, she's coming back on Friday. Next Friday. Sharon is from school? From the university. From the university. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Do pray. Davos is actually off to Cambodia next week. Oh, if you want to know more details, just let me know. That catch will be in that three week, that three four weeks in Cambodia. Yeah. All right. We'll be good to pray for her. Any um, other celebration? Yes. Um. Today, if you didn't know, it's Bible Sunday. Ah. And um, I just read some wonderful things about a national translator in the Democratic Republic had to flee. You know, we 
took with his laptop. He's a he's a famous maker, and his neighbour took um, a generator, yeah. and the two of them found each other, and say they didn't have any shelter over their head for over a week. He still kept on doing his translation. Wow. So, pray, there's so many um, people doing translation in very difficult circumstances. One man I read, um, his wife and family left him, but now he's back, but he's in a separate part of the house, and he, can, he only meets with his wife occasionally on the rooftop. But that's because he's a Christian and, and, and a translator. But praise the Lord for um, their servant heart and, and obedience to the vision here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Any other <coughs> celebration? All right. We're going to thank God together for those amazing, the amazing work that is doing in our midst. When we hear such testimonies of what the Lord is doing, we are encouraged and reminded that God is still at work. Father, we thank you. We bless you for the birthdays. We bless you for your word that is being spread all over the world, that is being translated into thousands and thousands of languages. We thank you for the opportunities that you bring our way. We thank you that you allow us to reunite with our families in several ways, Lord. We thank you, King of Glory, for all the amazing things, for the wonders that you are performing amidst of us, Lord. For all these wonderful and perfect gifts are coming from the Father to us, Lord, and they are a breather to us, an encouragement to us, that indeed you are with us. If you were not on our side, Lord, we would be far. We would be worn out, Lord. But we thank you because when you perform them in our lives, Lord, we are strengthened to trust you and we pray for more to come, Lord. We pray for, uh, for the troubles that are coming up, Lord. We pray for journey masses, Lord. May all be well, King of glory. We pray for your hand to be stretched in every area of, uh, of, of our needs, Lord, of your people's desires, Lord. We pray to see much more coming. And Lord, we will give all the glory and all the praise to your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We have a video that is going to be an announcement to bring forward before we start uh, singing, before we start worshiping. Uh, it's a tier fund quiz, fundraising. It's going to be on 15th of, uh, of November. I'd like us to watch the video and then we will, we will, we will see. Makarana, Elijah is in desperate situation. 
The men she relies on for food and income is faring again and again. To help communities that are affected by changing weather, Tier Fund and our partner, Assemblies of God, are teaching them better ways of farming so that uh, they can farm smarter. We are also teaching them business skills, beekeeping, livestock production, particularly on the goat and chicken rearing. This is very, very, very important because uh, it provides families with alternative so that uh, they are able to sell livestock or honey and then have money which they use it for when they have hunger. One way this church we believe uh, in, uh, we believe in uh, in the, that God, what the mission that God has called us to to do as this congregation is to love God and to love the people around us, to love our neighbor. And this is an opportunity as it comes as Tier Fund. It's an opportunity again for us to open our hearts and listen to what God has to say at such a time. So an opportunity has again has come that on 11th, uh, that night, we're going to have a tear fun quiz taking place. It's going to be 15th. on 15th, sorry, of, uh, of uh, November. Uh, if you need more information concerning tear fun and how to be able to join the, uh, uh, the, the quiz, the quiz. <laughs> It's good you can contact the pastor will be able to get in touch with you and probably if you are on church WhatsApp, you yeah. also know how to connect there. They'll be able to guide you in that way. Uh, we're going to stand and sing 10,000 Reason. Bless the Lord, all my soul. <laughs> Thank you. 
Lord of Lords. We bless your name because you're wonderful. Because you are so, so good. You are our hope. You are our delight, Lord. We look back at such a time and wonder where we will be without you. You loved us, Lord, each day of our lives. Your love comes through. Even when we close the doors of our houses, God, your love is with us. Lord, we choose to come and offer our bodies and offer our time and offer everything that we have to you. To raise it to worship and glorify your name. To celebrate your name on such a day. To proclaim your goodness, O oh God. To share of your wonders amidst us, Lord. Jesus, we love you. We love you, Lord. And even as the children, Lord, are going to, to their Sunday school, we pray that you bless them. We pray that you speak to them. We pray that they will hear your voice, Lord. For you say that let the children, let the little one come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom is theirs, Lord. At such a time, Father, we ask that you speak to the children, that they will be brought up in your ways, they will grow up in the knowledge of you, and not only the knowledge of you, but have a relationship with you. We pray that you speak through uh, the teachers, the people that are going to be speaking to them, their preparations be placed, Lord. And as we stay and continue to worship, we ask that you dwell amidst of us with your praises. Amen. Amen. Amen.
The Lord invites us this morning to share a meal with Him as a remembrance of His death on the cross for your sins and for my sins. Today we stand as children of God because of Christ's finished work on the cross. All your sins were washed away. All your sins were pardoned. When I think of my sins being forgiven, I think of that the time before I became a Christian, there was a switch somewhere with the meat reading every sin that I commit. In the day I say to Jesus, yes to Jesus, that switch 
went off because of Jesus' work on the cross. And at such a time, we look back to what Christ has done on our behalf, in our place, and we rejoice, and we remember, and we celebrate, and we encourage, and we look forward to a moment when we will have that marriage supper with him. So if you're Christian, you are a child of God, this morning you are invited to come to the table. And as we come to the table, I want us to, to be reminded of Paul's words in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23. This is what Apostle Paul says. For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you think, whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. We are going to have communion and I'm going to pray. How is it going to be done? Oh. Precious Father, we thank you for the bread, your body, broken, bruised, crushed. You were denied in heaven. And you were denied on earth. You were left hanging on the cross. A shame you endured. When you left heaven, you opened the door for us to come in. And Jesus, we thank you for the blood that was shared and that covers our sins past present and future lord all is covered in you and lord as we partake of these emblems may we be reminded of the work that you endured of the cross and may we be encouraged May we find healing. May we find our hope deeply rooted in you. That every day of our lives, Lord, we will look to you and we will be assured of our future. That it is secure in you. Our names are written in the book of life, Lord. And we are not living as failures, Lord. But we live as victors because we know our destiny is secure in you. No matter what we face today, no matter the sicknesses, no matter losing our dear ones, not even Lord Corona that is speaking right now so loud all over across the world. We are sure, we are reminded, we know that it is all secure in you. So may you bless these emblems that you partake of them. Whoever partakes, whoever receives and partakes, if they are sick, we speak healing. 
if they are depressed, we speak freedom. If they are on the ground crushed, we speak strength, rise up in you. Wherever questions are, we speak answers. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. So together, let's take the bread. We give thanks for the bread. And then together we can take the way. Paul speaks these words. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord is dead until he comes. We stand to proclaim that we are children of God, saved through the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. We tell our dear ones, our loved ones, our neighbors, wherever we go, at the place of work, through actions and through words where possible, that Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. Are we going to the matters for prayer? I'll invite some to come and lead us in that session. Father, let's pray. Father, we come before you. Father, it's written when two or three come together in the name. Lord, you promise that you'll always be there. Yes. You said if two shall agree upon touching anything on earth, mm. Lord, you say you will do it. You said ask anything in my name mm. and I will answer you. Yes. And Father, this morning we come to you in the name of Jesus. Mm. Father, we always thank you for that name. Because we know in the name of Jesus there is power and there is authority, O oh God. Mm -hmm. And Father, we come before the throne room of heaven mm -hmm. and we cry out unto you, Father. Lord, you've heard every cry of every heart in this room. Mm -hmm. Father, you've heard the cry of Natasha, Father Lord. Mm -hmm. You've heard how she has to go back to, for surgery, Lord. But Father Lord, the issues and the complications that are happening in her body, Lord, are causing so much worry and distress in her life. Father, I lift this before your very throne room, O oh Lord. I come before the courtroom of heaven, O oh God. And I cry in the name of Jesus. The Lord, you may arise in your power. Jehovah Rapha, arise in your healing power. That Lord, touch the life of this one, Lord. I thank you for her life. She is your child, O oh Lord. And Lord, of oh God Almighty, as a father, and I know you wish best for your children, O oh Lord. I ask that, O oh God Almighty, get the anointing that heals every bone, every man. Oh so, Lord, in our body, begin to come upon her right now. Spirit of God, we know that it's not by might. We know that it's not by power, but by you, Holy Spirit. We ask you, may you come in your power upon Natasha's life. And Lord, you may continue and begin to do a new thing in her life, Lord. All to the glory of your name, O oh God. Father, we thank you also for, for Toxic's son who is in the care home, Lord. Mm -hmm. Father, we lift that one before you, O oh God. That I will lift you up before you. And we ask in the name of Jesus again, Lord, that you may arise in your goodness, in your masses, Lord, that are new every morning, Lord. Lord, we call upon heaven, Lord. We call that you will intervene in this situation, Lord. Arise, O oh God, and let the gates of hell, Lord. O oh God Almighty, God of wonders, God of miracles, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah 
Jehovah Jireh, you who arise, who is the beginning and the end. We commit this before you. And we ask in Jesus' name, O oh Lord, that Lord, you begin to heal their bodies, heal their bones, heal their soul. For the crown of the head to the soul of their feet, Father, we command that there be healing right now. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up all this issue, Lord, that Lord God Almighty, anyone that's going through the times of COVID-19, Lord Almighty, mm. Lord, you're the Lord of Lords. Lord, there is no name that's above your name. Yes. COVID-19, Lord, is just a name. Yes. And Lord, we mention at the mention of the name of Jesus. We command that the name, the knee of COVID will bow before you, oh Lord, this morning. Lord, arise in your power. Arise in your wonder. Arise in your miraculous ways, oh Lord. And show yourself mighty on behalf of everyone in this room tonight. And Father, we lift up the nation of Nigeria. And Lord, we pray in Jesus' name, O oh God. You are a God of blessings, Lord. May your spirit begin to hover on that land, O oh yes. Lord. That land of Nigeria, Lord. Father God, we ask, Lord Almighty, arise in your power and begin to move in your might. Arise and move in your goodness. Your masses are new every morning, O oh King of glory. We thank you who you are. There is nothing impossible with you, Lord. It is impossible to please you with that faith, Lord. Tonight we stand on the ground of faith and we call upon the God of heaven and earth that you may arise, O oh Lord, and begin to touch every life on that nation, Father. And Lord, we lift up this church before you, O oh King of kings and Lord of lords. May you begin to do your work in us, Lord, and through us, O oh Lord, to touch every life wherever they are. All to the glory of your name. We thank you. We bless you, Father Lord. And we pray for Dallas, Lord, as she prepare to travel to Cambodia, O oh God Almighty. Mm -hmm. Father, we release your angels to go ahead of her right now. Father, we prepare the airline. We pray the air hostesses, Lord. We prepare the airways, Lord. We pray her family to receive her King of Kings, O oh Lord. May you go with her. May you be her strength, O oh Lord. May you be her comfort, O oh Lord. Mm -hmm. May you be, O oh God, that you surround her with your glory and your power, oh Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We thank you, King, King, King. And Father, we pray for all this issue, Father, in Iran. Father, Lord, we pray for all those people that are suffering mm -hmm. under this situation, under the oppression of COVID-19, Lord. Yes. Father, we arise in the name of Jesus. Right. And Father, we rebuke that power in the name of Jesus. Lord, arise, oh God, and pray, oh God, that you may show yourself wonderful and powerful on behalf of everyone. We ask all this in that name. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to a moment of listening to God's word and I'll invite Darren to come and take over. Thank you. Good morning everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I just want to share a, a word that somebody had in our congregation about this church. And it, this is how it goes. It was raining outside and everyone was walking around with their umbrellas to keep dry. Then what was strange was that people were entering the church and they still had their umbrellas up. I felt Jesus say to me, the umbrellas are a barrier that was in the way of my spirit falling down afresh on my people. The umbrellas need to come down. I want to remove the barriers, but you have to be willing to surrender afresh to me. I believe we need to pray together as a fellowship and ask Jesus to come and help us surrender to him, to give him what has been a barrier, whether it's past hurts, worries, fears, broken relationship, discouragement, pain, sin, wrongdoing, etc. Then pray that the heal, the wounds, that the spirit will fall afresh on us. Mm -hmm. I pray then, let it rain. Mm -hmm. If this is spoken to you in any way, about having an umbrella and a barrier, please deal with it, because we are a church. Individually, we are the church, the body. When, when someone suffers, we suffer with you. When some part of the body rejoices, we rejoice with you. And even as well, to be honest, if one is in sin, this will affect us too as a body. 
So even for the sake of the body, for the sake of God's glory, let's get right with God. If there's things that the Holy Spirit may have taught you today, let's get rid of it quickly, very, very quickly. I want to also encourage you as well what's been going on. We had our, we, every Thursday here at 6.30 to 7.30, we come and we pray. We come here and we pray. We had about five of us here last week. And we just simply prayed and we're praying and we're just praying how the Spirit led. And we actually simply just prayed a simple prayer actually. Lord, bring people. Bring people. Let them come. And someone was, talk, someone was praying about, I think people are going to come. The light's on, the building. And literally as we said amen, someone did come. Someone come. And again, it's not surprising. Someone came and said, Funny, I was actually going to go the other way, but something led me to go this way. I wonder what that could have been. <laughs> something led me to come this way, and then I saw the light on. And I thought, I'd come in and see what's happening. And then we talked, and it's actually, some of you may know this person called Shane. He's come here before, and he, he actually asked for prayer, and he said he's going to try and come back with us. But again, this is what prayer does. We wasn't expecting it that quickly. You know, you, you think, oh, maybe along the lines. But we prayed and said, Lord, let us be welcome in place. And someone just came in off the street. So I want to encourage you that God is doing a great work. And please, let's start sharing what God is doing. I know God does things in our lives. Really good at start sharing. I just want to encourage you, every Thursday, if you want to come along, every Thursday, we just have prayer, a time of prayer. And we just literally, we use our gifts. Some people will have some spiritual gifts. Some people may hear from the Lord in by vision or by scripture, and we just pray and see what God has got for us. So, and then we do a bit of worship as well. Very, very again, very small amount of worship, but, but it's only for an hour. So if you want to come along, and again, using that great analogy of the sweet analogy, it's only an hour. <laughs> it's only an hour of your week. Only mm -hmm. an hour of your week. So please, come and join us. Okay, today we're going to be looking at uh, Romans 8, and we're also going to be looking at... Can anyone hear me, by the way? Mm -hmm. I don't have this on. And before I start, we actually got a reading. You don't have to come up, Jackie. I'm going to be using Romans 8 and also Timothy, 2 Timothy, but I want to just let Jackie read. It is Romans 18, 2.37. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which will be revealed towards us. For the creation waits with the eager expectation of the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to vanity, not of its own will, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of decay into the liberty of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and dwells in pain together until now. Not only so, but ourselves also, who have the first roots of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in hope, but hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for that which he sees? But if we hope for that which we don't see, we wait for it with patience. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which we cannot be uttered. He who searches the hearts knows what it is on the Spirit's mind because he makes intercession for the saints according to God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he folk knew. He also presented to be confirmed to the image of his God, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers, whom he presented those he also called, whom he called, those he also justified, 
whom he justified, those he also glorified. What then shall we say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who didn't spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how would he not also with him freely give us all things? Who could bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who justifies, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, yes, rather who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Could oppression, or anguish, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, even as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long? We were accounted as sheep for the slaughter. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We we'll also be using uh, 2 Timothy. If you've got your Bibles with you. Yeah, 2 Timothy 1 to 26, we'll be looking at. Go to look through that as well. So 2 Timothy 2 1 to 26. And today was kind of like the approval, God's approval workers. How does God approve us as workers? What does that mean as workers? So I'm going to be using obviously the, what was read out today and look at 2, Tim, 2, 2 Timothy 2 1 to 26. We see in 2 Timothy. Two to one. We heard last week that the Spirit gives us power. We talked about the Spirit gives us power. Then we read in 2 Timothy 2 to 1, You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. This is our foundation. This is our foundation, is knowing God's grace before we can go further. If you do not know God's grace, almost I'd say stop here. This is for you. This little bit here is for you. This is for you that knowing God's grace is the strength of every believer. If you do not know God's grace, you will be struggling. And actually, we need to be reminded of God's grace daily. Because you know, as some of us Christians who have been older Christians, we kind of forget and I love it when, you, if you can remember your first love, some of you when you first became a Christian, you were strong. Remember them days, some of you, when you first believed in Jesus? You were strong. And then, be, and then you get a bit older and you get a bit like, oh well. <laughs> so this is one thing, is knowing God's grace. And what was grace we, told, we heard last week is getting what you don't deserve. And that's everybody. We all fall short. And we get something we don't deserve. All of us. I don't care how well versed in the Bible you are or how well versed you're not. Or how often you come to church or how often you don't come to church. These are just added things. We need to know first that grace is something we don't deserve. For by grace you are saved through faith and it's not yourselves. Did you hear that? Not yourselves. When you start thinking, I'm going to be holy, you start becoming a religious. When even you think, well, if I come to church every single day, I'll be okay. And sometimes you use your brownie points. Church is good, don't get me wrong. But again, it's all about what Jesus did on the cross that brought you here. That's what brought you here, is by the cross. If you thought you got yourself up because I'm a morning person, God called you. Remember that God called you. It's a gift of God, not of works. So we cannot boast. There's nothing that we can boast about. I can't boast because I am now a pastor and I speak, so I must be really holy and we get receiving so many good gifts. No, can't boast. And surely some of you who are watching or listening may think, yeah, you haven't got much to boast about sometimes. Maybe these sermons aren't that great. 
that's okay. I'm like Paul. I don't come with eloquent words. I just come here to preach the cross of Christ. If that's all you hear since I've been here about Jesus' grace, I've done a good job. Okay, it's not about the Hebrew and the Greek, I do or I don't know. <laughs> remember that criminal, just to give you in perspective, remember that criminal on the cross had nothing to boast about. Nothing. Nothing. And then he still, and this was a great thing, when you see and hear Christ, he will change you. If some of you are not feeling changed, and some of you are not repentive, it's probably because you haven't met with the Lord lately or not at all. Because you can't do it on your own. That's one thing I want to tell you. You can't do this on your own. You've got to get the grace to be strong that is in Jesus Christ. So the criminal, as we know, he just said, cried out because he believed. He just said, remember me. Not much theology there. He didn't really do go through the Bible school. He didn't go through an alpha course. Just said, remember me. And Jesus says, I will remember you today in paradise. That was it. He didn't go, hold on, what were your sins again? Hold on, did you go, did you, did, did you follow me? Were you with me? Did you deny me? Did, no, that was it. So for some of you in this building, if you cannot accept the grace of God, maybe that is your umbrella. Maybe that is your umbrella today, that you are not being real with God and you're protecting yourself. You don't want his blessings and maybe you've got a warped concept because I've done so many bad things. Well, guess what? So did that criminal. So did that criminal do bad things. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you've done. Because it's what he's done for you. So, being strong in God, first of all, is relying on his grace. That is a beginning step. Grace is free, cannot be earned. Just receive it. So again, people who are watching and people who are here, I hope you've received it and I hope you keep receiving it. I hope you keep receiving his grace. Then Paul goes on to say to Timothy, join me in suffering. Something you don't hear every day, do you? <laughs> join me in your sufferings like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one serving a soldier gets entangled in the civil affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. When we are struggling, what comes out of our mouth? Is it pleasing to God? And don't worry, it's going to be hard. That, that again goes back to grace. And I'll tell you how to endure our sufferings. But God tells us not to be caught up. I always say, don't get caught up in Sky News. The world affairs. Don't get caught up. Some of us get caught up. We get so caught up, we forget to say, what's God saying? What's God saying in COVID? Or is it, it thus says, Sky News? And the news leads, we know, that brings us a lot of fear. But when you stand on God's grace, and you know God's purpose, and you know God is control, and you also know, Paul's will say in a minute, where we are going, it gives us hope and strength in the times when we're suffering. Hope is not, I remember watching Sky News just the other day and it was, again, it was very uh, stressful about this couple were talking about, my child can't go to school, this is terrible. And it was sad. And then Sky News said, if you need help, talk to us, kind of. And I thought, wow, this is where the church needs to step up. This is where the church needs to step up. There is a harvest out there. And as Jesus said, but, but the workers are few. We are the workers. We are there to give hope. We are there to give hope to a hopeless nation. Because right now, as you can see, you tell me, and probably people watching here, what hope do you have right now? You listen to scientific, you listen to that. They're both contradicting each other. I'm not even going to go there, but you hear contradiction every time. And even right now, please pray for Wales right now. Pray for Wales right now. They're, Wales right now, the church is closed. 
And interesting, that's where revival came from. Interesting. Now it's closed down. And they're now being told what is essential. When you go shopping, as you may know, they're told what is essential. Which, which is terrible. Which is terrible. They're told, no, you can't buy this. It's not essential enough. Yeah. What's God saying in all this? What's God saying all this? And could we suffer in this? What does Paul say about sufferings? We heard about it today. We heard about it. And I'm going to just have a look at it again. Consider that the present suffering is not worth comparing with the glory that is revealed in us. Now when we suffer, and again, I'm not taking this lightly, when we suffer, what are we comparing? What are we looking at? When we're going through a hard time, is it that we dwell in it? And probably our flesh does. If you actually read all of Romans 8, you'll see the flesh and the spirit. And please read that. I don't have time to go through that. If you look at Romans 8, you'll see the flesh is in desires and follows desires. And the spirit is life and peace. So when we're struggling, as Paul's saying, I can't even compare. He's comparing. He's comparing. What is he comparing? He's comparing God's glory. He's comparing the faith and the hope we have. Yet again, it's rhetoric we're going to hear it over again. It's the hope Paul has and the belief he has that when he suffers, he still says, I can't compare my suffering for what I'm going to receive. And for some of us, and this is very hard, very, very hard, some of us in the world, they don't know the glory because they are so scared of dying. You can see that they are scared of dying. But if Paul is here, do you think he'd be scared of dying? Or to be waiting for that glory? He'd be waiting for that glory that I cannot wait to come into the arms of the Lord. And what else have we learnt about him? We've also learnt, and we're going to see that, I know time is really short today. With this, Jackie read today, without grace again, and the Holy Spirit... We will not understand suffering and this fallen world. We won't understand it. I belong to a Facebook book called Christian Concern. I don't know if anyone has it. Sometimes actually irritates me, I'll be honest. <laughs> and I know, sorry if, you, if people do ever watch Christian Concern. It irritates me because they say, oh, look what's happening to the world. It's terrible. Paul knows it's terrible. Paul knows we, we live in a fallen world. And actually, I'm going to say something to you right now, which you all know. It's not going to get better. It's actually going to get worse. These are called birth pains. For the present time, it's going to get worse. But a lot of us are hanging on and think this is it. This is the eternal. This is, this is it. Nothing else. Paul was numb. Paul understood. Let's go through how to endure. Let's and tell other people. Again, his grace was sufficient. In his weakness. This is very strange. We had this strength, we've got suffering, and we've got weakness. Something that sounds a bit contradicting, doesn't it? But when we are weak, that is when we can see God's power on us. If you know the story of Gideon, he had a great army of 30,000, and then it got cut down to 300. Why was that? Because God said, I want people to boast in my glory, not yours. So this is another thing. Sometimes when we're suffering, it actually may be for God's glory. And that's a hard message. We don't hear that many times. It may be for God's glory, you're suffering because you're nothing. And you can still utter the words, Jesus. Look when Jesus was on the cross. And they said, surely this must be the Son of God. Because even on the cross, Jesus knew exactly what was going on. Exactly. Exactly what was going on. And they said, wow, surely he must be the Son of God. When you're struggling, do people say around you, surely this person has hope beyond measure. He's struggling, but he still can utter hope from his mouth. You'll be surprised. Most of you will be used when you're struggling, struggling. We can all be happy, clappy Christians when things happen our way. And God does give us, I'm not saying he doesn't, God will give us good gifts. 
But there are times we're going to be in the valley of suffering. So God can either refine us or God can use us. There was one man, I don't know his name, someone can shout it out, who was born with no arm, he had no legs and no arm, I forgot his name. And he struggled and struggled. He questioned God, why, why, why? And then he finally started preaching the gospel, knowing God's glory. And now he says, I'm gl- I would rather have no legs and have Christ and have legs and not have Christ. And he said, now I can go many places because how I look. People feel sad for me. But when I speak, there's more power. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could be all nice, pretty, have bling, bling, bling. Mm-hmm. But it could be an attraction. This, and sometimes God wants to say, get out the way. And sometimes that could be in our sufferings. And you'll be surprised how you'll see the glory of God when maybe God wants to use you in your sufferings. Endure it. And also remind you. Are we being reminded? I hope you are. I hope we're being reminded that death is precious. Some of us, obviously, we've got our mask on. It's very precious. We're worried. But are we not worried about people not knowing the Lord Jesus Christ? And are we not so worried that actually they're going to have eternal death? That they're done? And we sitting here to believe in Christ, we have eternal life. We're going to be redeemed. So what did Paul know? How can we tell others? He knew God's word has power. You can read this if you want to the verse I have again. I don't have time to do all this today. I do apologise. He knows God's word has power and he chooses to endure his suffering for God so others can obtain salvation. Can you believe that? Sometimes the things that we do should be because you want to do it for other people. The unselfishness. And sometimes that's going to be hard. That extra phone call when you're tired. Coming to church, you may not want to, but yet you know you may be blessing someone. For you coming today, you're blessing us. Did you know that when you're not here, maybe we've been robbed from a blessing? Maybe God's got something for you to bless someone else. Just you being here. Maybe someone's coming here because you come here. Because you cheer them up. Remember that. Or are you being selfish in what you do, even your Christian journey? Paul suffered for the sake of other people would obtain salvation. That's exactly what Christ did, didn't he? Christ suffered for us so he could, so we could come into his arms. So that again, you being a worker for God is being unselfish. He knew the glory. Again, we know, we've read this before. He knew the glory that was going to be received. He knows in a fallen world, but he knows one day to be redeemed. I'll be honest, I think preaching in one way could be very easy. Everyone knows this world is hopeless, and they're waiting for answers. You know, I joked the other day, I don't know how true it was, I don't want to get too much in politics, but it was funny when I watched the debate about Trump and he promised in two weeks' time there'd be a vaccine. <laughs> yeah, that was his hope. In two weeks it'll be over, I promise you, in November it'll be over. Now, some of us will laugh at that. But yet we've got something greater than that. Mm-hmm. We can say, COVID or no COVID, there's going to be a day when it's gone. Mm-hmm. Even if you've got to live with this, which you may have to because we live in a fallen world. You know, I don't want to say to you, I don't want to sort of get you down. This could, this could go on for a long time. This could be a long time. Because the world is broken. The world is broken. God is, I think God is allowing us to see the brokenness and God just waiting. Wouldn't it be great to look back during COVID and say, we saw many converts and revivals Thank, thank God we were allowed to go through this. This could be a time of revival because right now all our comforts and our hope being taken away and people will be crying out. This is where the church, I do believe, needs to cry out and offer that hope. He knows that he is adopted as a child of God and awaits redemption. He also knows the Holy Spirit will help him when he's weak. This is vital. Knowing grace, knowing that we're going to be suffering, 
but for God's glory. And trust me, I don't want to say all of you now sort of be dwelling in your suffering. No, no, no. Suffering, when you're suffering, you cry out to God, he ministers to you. You saw that. You see that with Jesus when he was praying and praying and, and, and anguish. And then he said the angels ministered and came around him. God can comfort you in your sorrows. How? I don't know, but ask him. All I'm going to say, all I'm going to say is ask him. God can be there in our sufferings. Sometimes the best counselling is going straight to God rather than going to a counsellor. I'm not getting against counsellors, but the hope in Jesus is this is it. It's like telling our child, wait, you're going on holiday soon. Wait, and they get excited, they save their pennies, and then they go on holiday. Wait, wait patiently, because soon when you see God, you'll be with him forever. Your bodies will be redeemed. There will be no more bad hearts. There will be no corona. There will be no more masks. Our bodies will be great. The glory of God, being with God forever and ever. That is the excitement and our promise and our hope. Nevertheless, this is the last thing I want to talk about. So we've just got, we've got the grace, we've got the Holy Spirit. The last thing we've got is God wants us to be and, and make us into his image. Why? Why do you think God wants us to be in his image? I'm actually going to throw it out to you. Why? Why does God want us to be like his image? Because we are his workers. I don't? We are his workmanship. We are his workmanship. Yeah, workmanship. Anything else? And he's inside us, I think. Can we physically see God right now? No. So how do people see God? In us. We are the witnesses of God. And it can be a good one or it can be a bad one. Some people come to Christ through you. You may know people. And most of us who are sitting here have been invited by somebody. You've watched someone, you've been discipled by someone, and you become a Christian. How have you passed it forward? How have we passed that forward? Or, this is a sad thing in church, I've heard this, where sometimes a Christian has actually stopped someone coming to Christ. In churches. I don't, I'm not a Christian because I don't like church. Oh, oh, that's awful, isn't it? Church gave me a hard time. Oh, Church should be a peaceful, loving, joyful place. And that's the thing where he's telling us now to be his image. He talks about we need redeeming. He now warns us, and if you're not looking at it, there's a lot more, there's a lot more in the Bible. These are things we see in Timothy. He warns us against quarreling words. Stop quarreling, stop arguing with each other. And it really starts with here. If we're arguing, quarreling, and we can't get on with each other here, how can we do it out there? It's hypocritical. If I've upset you, please come and tell me. Seriously, and if someone is upsetting you, you need to rebuke them in the gently. It's not right. We should be gentle. We should be kind. We should be the image of God. So that's what, and, they, and again, let your umbrella down. Maybe our umbrella's up because we've been hurt before by the church. I'm not ready yet. Give me a couple of months. I'm not ready. I'm not just sussing you out. People have come. We've, again, we, we, and it's, it's been great. And hello, Shane. Nice to meet you. I'm glad you've come. And and in terms of the other people coming, they're, they're watching us. They're watching us. Why have people left the church? Because of us. Because of us. Why are people going to come to church? Because of us. Because of us. So just going to recap. And sorry, it's been very short. I've looked at the time we've been over today. We have to know God's grace for our lives to be strong. So I'm going back. If everything here sounds difficult, it's because you don't have the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit with you. I don't want you to come away with me and think, right, I've got to try and stop this. Uh Uh-uh. You can't stop anything because the flesh is crying out all the time. Right now your flesh is probably saying, I'm hungry, Sunday meal. You have flesh, we're not fully redeemed yet, that body. But we have the Holy Spirit right now who helps us. We can cry out. 
God, help me. Okay, I'll help you. God, I'm weak. Help me. Are we doing that? Are we doing that? It's very vital. And then are we, once the Holy Spirit, are we asking the Holy Spirit to change us? Are we asking the Holy Spirit to change us? This is very, very important. Or are we sitting there like, I'm all right. <laughs> I'm fine. That's a bad place to be at. I'm all right. But then the other place is awful where I'm not worthy. No, you are worthy. Because when you say I'm not worthy, just the people sitting there, when you say you're not worthy, it's literally like denying Christ ever died for you. It's actually like taking Christ off the cross and saying, now you do it, which is, which is probably the blasphemy, really. You are worthy because Christ is worthy. That's it. You hide behind Christ every time. If you hide behind yourself, you'll get found out. It always happens. So that is what I want to leave you with today. And again, sorry it has been short, but I know God can speak. And these are some verses I want to give to you. 51, 10 to 12. Create in me a pure heart, O God. Renew a, you renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence or take away your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me, the, grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Let us also be reminded, was it on here? Ah, there it was, yes. Let us be reminded of our glory. Have a look at that. This is our glory, what we are going to have one day. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth passed away. There is no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully, and dressed for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among his people. He will dwell with them. There will be his people, and God himself will be with them, and be their God. And this is what I love here. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death. Bye bye COVID. Gone. No more death. Or mourning, or crying, or pain. For the old, older things have passed away. He was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give them whatever it costs from springs of water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all of this. And I will be their God and they will be my children. You have got a lot of stuff to inherit. Not only are you forgiven now, not only do you have life for abundance now, if you choose to, not only is no condemnation, even there's so much judgment, God doesn't condemn you, he just convicts you to repent. Remember that, just convicts, just pushes you nicely. He says, come on, dear, come on, come to me, get rid of that, you don't need that, get rid of it. That's what he does. And then he gives us more, more is waiting. More is waiting. If you're sitting there today and you're still struggling, I would say to you, go back to the beginning. You need to ask God for the grace and show me the inheritance. God does speak to these people. Are you willing to take your umbrella off and let the rain come pouring down on you and to save this community, this church? That's up to you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, through our human intellect, how can one understand when Paul is suffering in chains and yet is still rejoicing and still knows the glory of God and what his inheritance is going to have? 
Lord, help us to understand the martyrs who have gone before us, who died for their faith. But yet, we die with you, we rise with you. Lord, we know that when we are suffering, Lord, somehow you comfort us, you remind us, you show us visions or pictures, could even be healing. But Lord, we do know one thing, that one day all will be healed, all will be restored, all will be what we wanted it to be, just like the Garden of Eden when you were among the people and there was no shame in their nakedness, there was no fear. So Heavenly Father, may we start at the beginning again in the times of this present time and say, come. Come, Holy Spirit, with your grace so we can understand these times. And Lord, we have to understand that as we live in a broken world, these are birth pains and things will get worse. Prepare us. Prepare us to endure. And Lord, we only know only by your Spirit you can do this. So Holy Spirit, fall afresh on this church. Lord, we heard about this picture. Lord, if there is umbrella in us, if we're protecting ourselves, Lord, I pray by your Holy Spirit and your grace and your, your glory will fall on this place. We can realise we are the barriers, but you're the one who just loves us and removes them. So Lord, be with us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. This time I'm singing the last song, Trust and Obey.
His goodness restores my soul, and I will.